Okay, we will call the meeting to order. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Jesus, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Mary, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Chief Newby? Here. Mr. Hoagie? Here. Mr. Clark? Ms. Hairston? Here. Ms. Hurd? Here. Ms. Jones? Here. Ms. Simpson? Here. And Mr. Williamson? Here. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, yeah. Excuse me, Chief. Yes. I just want to make sure because I'm not sure the word got out that Larry had a death in the family. That's why he's not able to be here today. Okay. Thank you. Okay, approval of minutes of December 6, 2011 meeting, copies of which have been forwarded to all board members. Any additions or corrections or deletions to the minutes? Hearing none, do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Moved by Franz, seconded by Adrian to approve the minutes. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Most oh, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have a resolution to take care of here, except I don't have a resolution. <laughs> oh, okay. I use this one. <laughs> um, as we announced last month, and he is seated out in the uh, audience, is Jerry Hensley, who's been a member of this board and should be sitting down there right on the end, rather than out here in the audience. But uh, uh, Jerry had to, or thought necessary to relocate and had to step down from the board. But we do have a resolution of appreciation, and uh, I assume we're going to climb up front here after this is over with Mark. Absolutely. I, I, had a, I wanted to get a couple comments, too, after the resolution. Okay. I'll read the resolution first. Whereas Mr. Jerry Hensley served as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority from October the 28th, 2008 through December the 31st, 2011. Whereas during his term of office as a member of the Board, Jerry Hensley entered into the performance of his duties as a trustee in a knowledgeable, enthusiastic, and conscientious manner. And whereas it is the wish of the members of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority that Jerry has to be acknowledged with deep appreciation and gratitude for all concerned, which counts countless hours of devoted work on the board. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the conclusion of Jerry Hensley's service to the Dayton, Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority is noted with sincere regret that this resolution be presented to him as a formal expression of appreciation. By the action of the Board of Trustees of the Greater Dayton Regional Authority on January 3rd, 2012. You said you had something you also wanted well, to say. Now that he's off the board, I can <laughs> I can make some comments. Just kidding, Jerry. Uh, I know most of you know uh, Jerry's an individual who knows transit really well, uh, uh, and from the ground up, right, Jerry? And I and I would argue Jerry knows good transit and he knows bad transit, uh, and he knows when we're one or the other. Uh, there's just no doubt about it, uh, and, there, and there never has been. And that you could probably argue that Jerry had as much time uh, in service to RTA before he was a board member uh, than since. Uh, he, he has served on advisory committees for us, and he has made a commitment. We have it on videotape uh, that he will return to that role since he won't be leaving the region, uh, just Montgomery County. And that's important to us because this is a critical time for RGA and its advisory committees. We're, we're trying to make our advisory committees, uh, I would say, a little more impactful within RTA. And so it's a perfect time for Jerry to return to that role, I think, because he will be great at that. Uh, but I guess what I appreciate most about Jerry is uh, Jerry's my check and balance. Uh, not all Jerry's emails have been pleasant for me to receive. Uh, but they've been fair and honest, and, and there are always issues that we need to work on. Uh, enunciators is one that rings a bell, uh, and uh, it came to light that uh, we had some problems with the use of the enunciators on the buses, thanks to Jerry's help, and we're, we're a little better at that today. But any of those issues, and especially issues that relate to accessibility, we've had some bus stop issues uh, that Jerry's helped us with, 
uh, and then beyond that, the obvious, his real skill is in IT. He's an IT guy, uh, and it was nice to have you know, a third party, but I didn't want to listen to Hank. You know, I could always have a, another opinion on an issue, but really what we had was someone who was there to support, you know, when our IT group was looking for something, typically what I saw is support for what they felt we needed, uh, but Jerry's been a great resource for us uh, for the entire time, and I guess I like the idea that Jerry's kind of going full circle here. He's going back to where he started with RTA. I know he'll continue to be a customer because that's the kind of guy he is. Uh, I will, probably won't get him every day though, uh, but he'll remain a customer and, and still staying active in our advisory committees, which to me is will be a huge way to continue to contribute uh, for the entire region. Uh, so we also have a little thank you form uh, that we'd like to present. If I could get the chief to, to come down front, maybe we'll all go down there and, and present this at once. to stay warm so we wanted to have one of these but keep around your neck you know and keep you warm when you're waiting at a bus stop uh wondering if you're going to have to email mark or not the bus is gonna be on time. but more important than that we want to have something wrapped around that scarf and uh, this is a pretty unique coat it has both our normal logo and then the trolley logo which is obviously is the one thing that's unique about us that very few cities can talk about so we wanted you to have this kind of special gift I know you'll wear it with pride. Absolutely. And we'll get, there's a little way at the signboard. It's a five year commitment on an advisory committee. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, that means a lot to me that you're willing to stay on and help us going forward. So I appreciate it so much. Thanks for all you have done. And will do. We're going to miss you, Jerry. Oh, Mark right. pointed out about the IT thing. I've said this many times, but when we sit in committee meetings and there's always these things every year that are coming through. And most of us are someplace out here in left field when it comes in. Here was a guy that always had the information and was such a big help to the rest of the board. To say nothing about his long time experience being on the advisory committee in the past. We're just really going to miss you, Thanks so much. Can we do that? He's going to want one, one good picture. Fair house, that trolley shop. That's neat. Great. I want three minutes, but um, I did want to say this has definitely been a milestone experience in my life. Uh, I, I would really suggest everybody who rides the bus be a board member someday, but I know that can't happen. Um, it certainly, um, how would you say, calibrates your perception of what the bus system is like and what it takes to make it work and all the folks and what they do. And I just, I can't thank the RTA enough for the opportunity. I can't thank the county enough for the opportunity. And uh, I really do look forward to you know, future service. Um, like I said last time, I didn't start my service with my board membership and I certainly don't plan on ending it with my uh, need to resign because I moved across the county line. And so I'm um, hope to see you all many, many times in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, before moving on, um, Jerry will all get a copy. The resolution has to be signed by somebody other than myself, but uh, uh, so that it is official. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the resolution that I read? So moved. Second. Okay. Is that Jamie or Sharon? She's first, I'm second. Okay. <laughs> Don't start <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you made a promise before this meeting. <laughs> I and I'm holding you to it. <laughs> Okay, all in favor of the motion signify by aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Committee reports. Adrian. 
there's a one action item from the Finance and Personnel Committee, and that has to do with rebranding the transit centers. Uh, the transit center rebranding is part of RTA's plan to update and improve its image and identity. The recently upgraded Northwest Transit Center was the first step in rebranding. The three most significant major elements of the rest of RTA's transit center rebranding are as follows. Installation and application of high performance codings for the South, East, and West transit centers. Replacement of the clock tower clocks with RTA LED backlit pan embossed tower logo signage for the South, East, and West transit centers. And this will be similar to the Northwest tower logos. And then the third item is a new LED back with hand embossed park and ride signage for South, East, and West transit centers. And this one item will also apply to the Northwest location. Sale bids for the South, East, and West transit center rebrand were solicited through the Dayton Daily News and the Dayton Weekly News. Invitations for bid were sent to 33 bidders at five fan houses. Um, at 2 p.m. November 30th, 2011, five bids were received and publicly opened and the results are attached for and review and have been reviewed by the court. The Finance and Personal and Planning Committee discussed this item at a meeting on December 20th, and we support the Executive Director's recommendation to the Board of Trustees. After reviewing and evaluating the bid received, the Executive Director recommends a contract award to Martin Painting and Coding Company for the procurement of South, East, and West Transit Center rebrand in the amount of $144,850. The procurement will be funded with 8% federal funds, and I would like to move that this recommendation be accepted. Move by Adrian. Do we have a second? second? I second. Seconded by Sharon. Um, any questions on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by. Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, and then has a comment or report from the Finance and Personnel Committee. Um, at the previous meeting, Mr. Robin Thomas provided an update of the RTA financials through the month of November 2011. The discussion covered items such as increased ridership revenue, increased sales revenue, lower contract fees, and the personnel costs that continue to stay in line with the budget. In addition, operating expenses are down 2% for November 2011, and 5% year budget. Additional positive news was the refund of surplus funds from the Ohio Transit Nursing Board. We're doing a good job. And that concludes my reports. Okay, any questions for Adrian? Hearing none. Okay, Janet, Planning Committee. Thank you. The Finance Personnel and Planning Committee met on December 20th. And we don't have any action items for the planning committee, but we do have some updates to provide for um, today's meeting. Mr. Eckler reported that the RTA participated in the December 22nd holiday food drive sponsored by the Salvation Army at the Croc Center. Due to the anticipated crowds attendant, attending this event, the RTA provided extra service on route number 17 to handle additional passenger volume. Mr. Eckler also provided an update of the City of Dayton's downtown graphic district and signage strategy. Zoning codes have been revised to now allow advertising on building wallscapes or standalone digital messaging boards. Staff will be looking into possible advertising options that might provide a positive revenue stream for the RTA in the future. We also had an update from Ms. Pritchard who provided highlights of the 2011 onboard newsletter which included an update on route number 34 for holiday shopping promotions and the deals and destination program. Ms. Pritchard also mentioned that RTA received the 2011 Large Business of the Year Award from the city of Trotwood. An update of the day pass program, which was implemented on January 1st was discussed. And Ms. Pritchard also unveiled the new RTA Board of Trustee orientation video. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. If there are any questions, Mr. Eckler and I would be happy to address them. Okay, I guess none. Thank you, Jen. Executive Director's report, Mark. 
I know this is going a bit too quickly, but it is the January meeting. We, we seem to have pretty quick meetings the, this time of year. I have very little to report other than what's in the package, and certainly I can answer questions, but just to let you know now that the, these folks have all run their earned time off out, they're, they're all going to have to be at work now uh, starting this week, and our focus... Does that include the executive director who has to be at work? <laughs> that, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a great shot. Uh, but our priorities right now, as the board is aware, is uh, wrapping up work on the strategic planning effort. Uh, you know, we've stepped back a little to make sure that the final document is one that's satisfactory to the board. And in the coming weeks, we're going to finalize, you know, what we're proposing internally as the actual objectives going forward for each year to get back to the board uh, in the not too distant future so we can get that wrapped up. That's the big, that's probably the primary issue right now aside from the obvious, we're in a new fiscal year and you know everything starts over on the first day of the first month of the new fiscal year and all bets are off. We, we had a great year in 2011, we finished well, we're really proud of it, uh, but that was 2011 and now it's 2012 and we've got to achieve balance in this year and make sure that we do all that is necessary to get there. Uh, on the good news side, of course, uh, a few days ago we started uh, the experiment with a day pass. We now have a an adult day pass available for individuals for five dollars can be purchased on the bus uh, and as soon as the flyers went out people were asking questions which was a good sign uh, I, I think uh, it'll be an interesting experiment and I think uh, my gut says it'll be a successful one and the reaction I've had uh, all along was positive but even since it's been published uh, and the $5 amount was published, that was always the issue. What's the price point that's right on that? I think we've hit the right price point on that. I'm going to admit that publicly, Frank. Uh, <laughs> we had some long arguments, Frank and Mary and I, about what this number should really be. Uh, but, but I think this may be the one. So, uh, so I wanted to give Frank his, his due on that one. Uh, but uh, that's where we're at. We're going to work hard and uh, uh, this may be a short meeting, but February won't be. I can assure you we'll have a lot more business to take care of. Okay, on that uh, day pass, can we get an update on that, say, in maybe three months, see what the uh, history and experience is of the day pass? I'm sure the board would be interested to know. Maybe we can bring it up at the um, uh, committee meetings. And probably mm -hmm. raise it. Mark, uh, I, I'm looking at the vehicle service reliability report. Maybe John will be the one to answer that. Uh, I'm very pleased with what's happening with the diesel fleet, and I'm sure that's a lot to do with the fact that we basically have a new buses added to the fleet where we went from, in November 2009, from 2,900 miles uh, between service calls up to 3,000, almost 3,200 service miles, so that's certainly a very positive trend. But the number that that is one is a little troublesome, and maybe it's the aging of the fleet, is the project mobility. Three years ago, we went 36,000 miles without road service, uh, call, road calls, and we're down to 12,000 miles. Uh, is that strictly a result of the aging of the fleet? I wish I could say it was. It's a combination of a lot of things, but right now, the main concern is the powertrain And John, with regard to the trolley fleet, in 2009, we went 2,000 miles between road calls. And we say in November of 11, we went 5,009 miles, but we didn't have any trolleys on the road, did we? Yeah, November? we did. Yes, but is that number distorted? Or is, it, is it really an improvement? It's not distorted, but it's unrealistic only because we had just two trolleys running at a time. And the two bus was out there. Yeah. But, but again, you know, our research, if you go back to the study we did a couple years ago, uh, eventually when we moved to AC Drive, uh, that would be mighty low, that number. So our anticipation is it's going to be much higher than that mm -hmm. eventually when we, when we get AC Drive in place. It's, it's a year old, but in November we got 500 miles. What, what is that distorted also for a reason? For, for a year, it is. 
out of the trolley that we were behind versus the, uh, the miles that was going. Because that's when we were really starting to take trolleys out of service. Um, we should be starting getting some realistic numbers back in, uh, I would say, right around the April, May time, right? Is when we'll start seeing the realistic. Just about the time they close down all the streets in downtown Dayton and you go back to have to run diesels again, you get realistic numbers. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. that may be the truth. We're working hard, and hopefully the state will work with us, so we'll be able to still make no problems. And this one I'll direct to Mark. Mark, over the months, and uh, we we discuss the on-time performance, and I know you're working, and your people are working to try to improve it, yet if I recall the numbers from prior months, they don't seem to be moving very much. When do you think we will really see a major improvement in the on-time performance? Well, arguably in the coming year, now, there was significant improvement early on in the elimination of you know what are called the earlies in some of those calculations, uh, but not significant movement in the end uh, in the overall on time. Uh, but I think we're to the point where we pretty much have the electronic issues uh, on the table that, that could be contributing overall. And there are others that, that, that just don't. So we will either see a, a significant improvement or I can tell you that it's actually a, an issue that's going to be assigned to certain individuals specifically in the coming year uh, to basically implement the remainder of what we think is at hand that can be done uh, to make sure it's accurate. Because we want it to be accurate no matter what. We want to make sure the numbers we see, much like the road calls, uh, are real numbers. So I, I think uh, by mid-year, I think I'm going to be comfortable that it's where it should be, one direction or the other. And it may mean, you know, does that mean that 85 is a great number, not 90? We'll see. I mean, my approach to these things, and road calls may be the best example because John knows very well, he's been around a while, and uh, uh, there are cities in our country that consider a road call when a bus is towed. You know, we consider a road call when we send a mechanic. Uh, and if you look, and I do occasionally, we, if you look at all the road calls, you'll see some unusual ones, uh, like for us, fare boxes are a huge contributor to our road call issues. Uh, and, I, and I have a relative in the business who called me a while back and was going on about how great their miles between road calls were and the number was so high. I said, well, those are wonderful lies, but you, know, you, you need to dig because those are lies. You need to understand what's really behind the numbers because our goal is to, to be comfortable that what's happening on the street is what we really want, whether it's road calls or whether it's on time. And uh, I mean, that's where, you know, obviously big concerns with those, with the trolleys because they've never performed anywhere near the diesels since this fleet's been in place. And yet the reputation of a trolley bus is exactly the opposite to do better. Uh, and we do anticipate, my memory, it was around 16,000 between road calls that Boston was seeing on their AC drive units, which is about triple what an excellent diesel fleet would be. I mean, a high-end excellent diesel number. So that would be good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions for Mark? Hearing none, I have no old business. Do you, Mark, have any old business? No, sir. No new business. We have nobody signed up to speak today that I'm aware of. Okay, any board members have any comments or announcements? And no need for an executive session. I would comment on the fact that uh, I was joking about when Mark said everybody had to be here this whole week and working hard. I asked if it applied to the executive director, uh, making reference to the fact he is going to take a couple days off or so. <laughs> and uh, I did wonder, though, I did hear that you have a birthday coming up. Is it the fact that you're aging such that you just can't get a whole weekend now or <laughs> <laughs> like it could well be it, you know, it's all a matter of perspective chief you know and <laughs> my grandchildren think their dad is really old and i say well where's that put me and they, you know, their eyes just kind of light up so it, it could well be not ready to retire yet we wish you a happy birthday and a good trip thank you so much i have no other comments i would entertain a motion to adjourn so moved One of the two ladies there, <laughs> Sharon, I shouldn't know. She, she's, I made a comment to her, so she's out to get me today. Seconded by Adrian. All in favor of the motion, signify by.
Aye. 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 Aye.